Hey, I'm Jem. Let's review the latest product in the lineup of Bluetti. It's a fridge, a portable fridge. It's called the Multicooler, aka F045D. It's part of a new ecosystem they called the Swap Solar. So obviously it's because you can swap the batteries. I suppose that if you watch this video, you already know about this. With this unit comes an AC180T solar power generator. It takes two of those, can recharge them at the same time, and you can hot swap them under load. I managed to cook steak and boil tea while hot swapping the batteries. Didn't flinch. Before I start, I'm not being paid by Blue Eti, so I can say whatever I like. They just sent me this unit to beta test it, probably because I'm a solo nerd. So, speaking of honest opinion, in the beginning I really thought that what's going to blow the multi-cooler out of the water is using, separately, an AC70. The battery inside of this has about the same capacity as the battery in the multi-cooler. On top of that, it probably has cloud access and it's got AC output. Well, extra convenience, but I shouldn't put my fingers in there. So, this plus a regular portable fridge. Like this one. And my tests were about should I rely on this or on the multi cooler, knowing that I can lift this with my pinky. Multi cooler has really good ergonomics. I'm not the robust type, still, it's easy to lift. The wheels help a lot to slide it in the car. And there you go. With a few bottles and a battery inside, that was a little more than 32 kilos. Still, it didn't feel that bad. I even have some more room to add a big gym bag and I still have room for some luggage. But on top of portability, there is another item that really impressed me compared to the regular fridge. It's both power efficiency and insulation. Compared to a basic fridge, the multi-cooler, once the contents have been brought to the target temperature, on average it's about 5 watts of power draw, which results in a daily draw of between 130 and 140 watt hour per day. Considering that the B70 battery holds about 700 usable watt hours of capacity, the math is done pretty easily. That's roughly five days on a single battery. And I managed to get up to 5.5 days, which is impressive. Well, since it's a self-respecting Bluetti product, Multicooler has solar input. Take this PV200 for instance and the sun that we have today, about 700 watts per square meter. It means that I can recharge the battery by about 120 watt hours in less than an hour, which means an hour in the sun, 24 hours of operation on battery. While I drive to the shop, I'll order the device to start creating ice cubes. Within 20 minutes, I should have two batches of 12. Water is flowing on the cooling unit and it does the trick. Let's go. Let's test how good the multi-cooler is at keeping things frozen. First stop, croissant, pure butter. If they pass the test and are still cold and frozen tomorrow morning, they have an appointment with two days solar power in the oven. Next, some health food, just because it's fun. Finally, let's buy my aunt some sushi so she has something to nibble with her champagne. In the meantime, my phone's battery died, so I'm now recharging it on the multi-cooler's output. So, the croissant first. And then the sushi? No, let me check. That's not right. There, much better. I told you I have OCD. Now, more sushi. And a pizza. There you go. Hello, I'm Jem. Behind me, line of Waterloo, sending regards from Belgium, especially to my French neighbors. They have a history being here. Hey. Ah, we've got some ice. So, we drove 20 minutes and we've got some ice. Nice. So, pizza for later, sushi for now. More sushi. Champagne, water is overrated, so... Let's ease the digestion at the trampoline park with my son. <laughs> he calls this the face planting academy. 
I set the fridge to 10 degrees Celsius below the freezing point. Let's now see if after a full night in this mode, the croissants are still hard and frozen. Of course, I have to play with my nice bluety gadgets. The ring light is operated by an EB3A. By the way, this is me in my pajamas. It's 5.30 in the morning and I hope I'm not going to cross a neighbor. Okay, so let's approach, we open, knock knock, they seem hard, let's just rip open the bag and check. Well, making a note here, huge success. Well, I'm a repenting software engineer, so pizza in the morning is tempting, but nothing beats croissant. Nice. Birds are restarting to sing. Spring is coming. One single rooftop panel is fueling AC180T. I've been doing that for almost six weeks. These two wires run to the garden box and we refill the swap solar batteries. The other day I had used this unit in order to cook some steak. You'll see at the end of the video I'm hot swapping while cooking at about 1200 watts. Works perfectly fine. Just you see, pull the battery, still works like a charm. But hey, let's return to the croissant baking story. Here is the unit. It needs two batteries because we're going to pull more than 1200 watts. I need to reroute the wiring so that the oven feeds on the solar generator. By the way, these are my legs. What's the time again? 10 past 6. Now, for this, as I said, you need two batteries. So we'll recover the one from the fridge and the contents will certainly stay cold until later today. It feels like sci-fi putting some fuel cells in a Terminator unit that came from the future. Hopefully it's for the best. This generator is limited to 1.8 kilowatts, so it's not enough to supply the 2.5 kilowatts needed by the oven. But the oven happens to be a pure resistive load, so it's a perfect candidate for testing power lifting. In this mode, AC180T essentially limits the voltage to the point of having an output that matches its 1800 watts of design output power. It works nicely, but only on pure resistive loads. Since the oven is operating at 70% of its design power, I have plenty of time for my OCD to get it right, placing the croissant on the cooking plate. It didn't take this much time. Here it is. Let's start baking. In the meantime, a small version of myself is setting the table. He wakes up early, 6.30. Ah, here they are, just as nature intended them to be. Golden and brown, glorious and delicious. Look at that, no franken food. Here we are. But before we start, there is something essential that we need. Solar coffee. Here it goes, solar espresso for myself. <laughs> and of course, a coffee for my wife. Mm. Thank you. One last test. We have the wire running all the way up here to a radiator where there's little gem. Yes, I'm over. It's like uh, sun heat. It's like sun heat now. It yes. feels better than regular electricity. Yes. Ah, thank you. Finally, what will I do with this the rest of the year? Will it sit in the attic with the other fridge? Oh, by the way, hello, dead pylon tech. Which hat will I wear today? Another dead pylon tech and the other fridge. So, this is the office. No one in here at the moment. It's lunchtime. I can speak all I want. So, this fridge is very silent. Doesn't disturb me while working. Moreover, it's got a lot of capacity. Can put a few bottles of water. Everybody can arrive in the morning and bring their own lunch. This part is of course staged because I don't want to play with people's food. I'm better educated than that. So water, probably some fancy yogurt, half eaten. 
There you go. A bowl of something. Another one. See, it's got a decent capacity for at least five people. There's the half-eaten yogurt. Some medicine just in case someone reacts to the yogurt. And here you are. Now, a few downsides. First, the plug. It's not compatible with the rest of the ecosystem. XC60 would have been perfect here. Then, it lacks cloud access for remote monitoring and operation. On top of that, it doesn't show how much power it harvests from the sun. It's embarrassing for a solar nut. That's just a detail, I agree. However, I use AC2A to have a good reading of the current harvest. Makes me feel happy. Now trying with my other car, which is a regular compact hatch, a Golf. Their boot capacity is different. Even though I can close the hatch, it technically uses all the space. Unless you are an organ trader, this could be a little bit of an issue, especially if you plan on a vacation. Now, comic relief time. Seriously. Cautionary tale. My parents came to say hi and I tried to fit the fridge in their car. Audi A5. Just make sure you can fit this in your car because I couldn't close the boot both sideways and the other way around. So in conclusion, the combo is a fantastic piece of engineering. Using this for six weeks has completely changed my perspective from thinking that I would need two devices rather than all in one. Power efficiency is just amazing. Moreover, this hot swapping capability proves the maturity of the design. Just look at this again. 1200 watts and still cooking, no interruption. Check out my other videos and shorts and maybe my Instagram channel as well if you want to see more sophisticated use of this device. Of course, you'll probably make better use of this than I did because you probably have real life scenarios like camping and so on. In my case, I just hope it was entertaining and useful if you decide to purchase this device. That's me making tea, about a kilowatt, and I will hot swap it again. Insulation, power efficiency, great hardware engineering, great electrical engineering as well, making tea. Probably the best fridge I've seen so far, and it can serve all day round, all year round as well. And it also helps me to solve some existential issues. Check out my Instagram channel if you want to see it in action making some frappe. Now I no longer have to choose between a coffee or a frappe. I can have both. Well, thanks for watching and until next time.